The dog that died. Jonathan Long and Corky Paul. Amazing pictures, seriously. Very funny, very cool. The dog that dug, Jonathan Long and Corky Paul. There once was a dog who was a bit of a clot. He'd buried his bone and forgotten spot. He sniffed around the garden in search of his nibble. So he sniffed something nice and started to dribble. It must be my bone, he said. Down in the muck, I knew one would find it with a bit of good luck. So he stuck in his paws and he scratched and he dug till he found something hard and he gave it a tug. But when he opened his eyes, guess what he found? It wasn't the bone that he left underground. It was an old brown shoe with a hole in the toe that someone had dropped a long time ago. I can't eat that, said the dog with a frown. My bone must be deeper. I'll dig further down. So he stuck in his paws and he scratched and he dug till he found something else. And he gave it a tug. But when he opened his eyes, guess what he'd found? It wasn't the bone that he'd left on the ground. So many amazing details in these photos. Ever seen a dog dig at the beach? It's like this. But a coal mining minel covered in soot very surprised to be tugged by the foot. Sorry, said the dog. I do beg your pardon. My dog can talk, but so I don't expect to find you in the garden. The miner yelled, bad boy, and made quite a fuss. Then he strode down the road to look for a bus. Well, I can't eat him, said the dog with a frown. My bone must be deeper. I'll dig further down. So he stuck in his paws and he scratched and he dug till he found something else and he gave it a tug. It was terribly heavy and the dog had to battle. But at last it came out with a shake and a rattle. Can you guess what it was? The thing that he found, a tubular train that chuffed underground with 24 carriages all full of faces and little fat driver in a hat and some braces. What are you doing? This isn't my station, shouted the driver with great indignation. Sorry, said the dog, I do beg your pardon. I didn't expect to find you in the garden. I can't eat him, said the dog with a frown. My bone must be deeper. I'll dig further down. So he stuck in his paws and he scratched and he dug till he found something else. He gave it a tug. But tugging it out was a terrible strain, more of a strain than the tubular train. And when it was out, guess what he'd found? Threw it away. Deep in the ground. It was a bone at last. It wasn't a single. It was joined to some others. And they all made a jingle. They were big bones of plenty and small ones galore. And all that was left of an old dinosaur. I was surprised at the dog. With a smile, this pack of snacks will last quite a while. Wait just a minute, came a voice from aloft. Those bones are rare and not to be scoffed. 
A smiling professor was over his shoulder with little round glasses and a shabby red folder. I'm hungry, said the dog. These bones are my dinner. If I didn't eat them soon, I'd end up much thinner. Look here, said the prof. I'm not being funny. Give me those bones and I'll give you some money. Great, said the dog. Holding out one of his paws. Two million pounds and the bones will be yours. Probably the most financially literate dog ever. The prof scratched her head and went, hmm, and ah, then paid him in cash and put the bones in her car. When she had gone, the dog went to the shops and bought a pound of his favourite chops and steaks and burgers and sausages and strings and hot spicy pies and other nice things. Then he invited his friends for a beautiful dinner when no one had bones and no one got thinner. Whole story this was in rhyming couplets. Looking for his bone, the dog dug up first a boot, then a miner and a tube train, and finally a dinosaur skeleton. There's a lot here for children to enjoy. Humor, repetition, and in Corky Paul's energetic, ener energetic illustrations, a journey into the mysterious world beneath people's homes and gardens.